So now the question is, how do we use logarithms to solve exponential equations? How do we use logarithms to get exponents out of the base? So there's a few ways of viewing or solving for the exponents. One way is rewriting an exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. This is a very nice method or approach to do. What you do is you have the base stays the base. I think of it as, you know, the base is the solid foundation that stays in, put in place. The thing that changes are the exponent and the result. So the base stays the base and the exponent and result swap place. So people call this rolling the log. It's just a nice play on words because we call it or we use the term LOG for the logarithmic function like a wood log, you know, a tree. So we're rolling the log. So you're kind of just doing the cyclical swapping of the exponent and the result. So to go from an exponential, which has base to the exponent is the result, this turns into log base base of the result is equal to the exponent. So for example, if we have two to the four is equal to 16, a true statement, right? Two to the four is equal to 16, throw that in a calculator, and multiply two by itself four times, you get 16. What we do here is we keep the base as two. So we have log base two and we swap the four and the 16. So 16 is now going in as the input of the log and four is now the result of that logarithmic expression. So some notational things and some things to mention here, we have logarithms with a bunch of different bases. You can have any base in the logarithm. The most common logarithm base is a base of 10. So if we have log base 10, we call that the common log and it is written as just log of x. So if you ever see just log of x, that means log base 10. And when you look at your calculator, your calculator will have a logarithmic function or a log expression button in it. And that log button is with a base of 10. So this right here is the log in your calculator. Additionally, another very common logarithmic base is the natural log, we call it, which is a log with a base of e. So if we're looking at log base e, because like I was saying, e pops up in so many places, especially with exponentials, we give it a special name, we call it the natural log, and we write it as ln of x. So ln instead of log, it stands for natural log, but some French person wrote it, so it goes backwards, log natural. And this is actually also in your calculator, the ln or natural log. And so again, I'll, I'll, and so I'll say it again, exponentials in logs are inverses. So in an exponential, you have the input is in the exponent, and then the output is the result of that base to the exponent. With logs, you have that result is the input and then the output is the exponent. The output is the exponent. That's the key there. With logs, it outputs an exponent. So it's asking, what is the exponent that would give you the result on the inside if we took that base and raised it to the exponent? So going back over to the specific example, we're asking, two to what power will give you 16? So you're asking if two is the base, 16 is the result, what is the exponent? So that's the question it's asking. It's searching or giving you the exponent. So this bottom line is that the output of a logarithm is just an exponent. Now we're going to get a ton of practice with rolling the log of creating or converting from logarithmic expressions to exponentials and from exponentials to logarithmic ex equations. So in the exponential form here, we have two to the three is equal to eight. All these expressions are true expressions or all these equations are true equations. Two cubed is eight. Nine to the one half power is three and so on. So we roll the log. So we have log base two. So you see that base there of two, you know that's gonna be the base on the log. And what we do is we just swap the place of the three and eight. 
So we have log base 2 of 8 that goes into the input is equal to 3. The output of the log is the exponent. The output of the log is the exponent. So we, we roll the log and we have log base 9, because 9 is the base here, of 3 goes on the inside is equal to the exponent 1 half. And just keep doing this. 8 to the 2 thirds is equal to 4. So we have log base 8 of 4, because we're now rolling that log, we're swapping the 2 thirds and the 4, is equal to 2 thirds, which is the exponent. And now we can do this going the other way. So you have the base is 4. So you have the base is 4, and we try to figure out 4 to what power is equal to the result. And the idea is that this result of the logarithm, the 1 half, is the exponent. So what we're doing is we're rolling or swapping the log. It works the same way. So we have 4 to the 1 half power is equal to 2. So this question is asking 4 to what power will give you that result 2. Well, 4 to the 1 half power will give you the result of 2. And here again, we have log uh, base 11 of 121 is equal to the exponent 2. So you're just rolling that log. And we'll do a few more going from logarithmic to exponential. So you have 5 as the base. So you have 5 to some power is equal to something. That power, that exponent is the 2. That something is the input of the log, the 25. Again, the idea is you're just swapping the places of the 25 and the 2. The base stays the base. That's the foundation. So here, it doesn't have a base written. So if it doesn't have a base written, the base is 10. So this is 10 to the, now we roll or swap the 100 and the 2. So we have 10 to the second power, or 10 squared, is equal to 100. Again, that's a true equation, just like the previous one. 5 squared is equal to 25. And again, here we have 3 is the base, and we're swapping the place of 27 and 3. So 3 to some power, which is 3, is equal to the result of 27. So now we have a whole table here of these swapping of the logarithmic and exponential equations. I strongly, strongly recommend pausing here and trying to go through and swap between logarithmic and exponential equations. So pause here, work through that, and unpause when you're done. So now that you tried out all 30 of these, you can compare and contrast what you got with what I got here. And if you got any of them that are different or that might look different, you should take a look and, and think about why yours are different and how I wrote them versus how you wrote them. So let's take a look at some basic log properties. And those log properties are always related to exponential properties. So with these, we have b to the 0. We're assuming that b is greater than 0 and b is not equal to 1, like we've been assuming before. So if we have b to the 0, this will always give you 1, which means if we roll the log on this equation here, b is the base, 0 is the exponent, and 1 is the result. So swap the 0 and the 1. So if we have log base b of 1, that result is the exponent, which is 0. And then we also have that b to the x is greater than 0. That's coming from the function or the graph. If you have a positive base and you keep doing exponents, no matter what that exponent is going to be, you're always going to have a positive result, which means if you have a positive result, then since the result is the input of the log, that means that the input must be greater than 0. And then with exponent rules, we have b to the m times b to the n. We add the exponents if we have that common base and we're multiplying, which means with logarithms, if we have log base b of u times v, what we do is we can apply the log to both the u and the v, but the thing that goes in between them, the operation is addition. So if we have log base b of u plus log base b of v. This is what we call the product rule. And similarly, when we're dividing by 
two exponentials where you have a common base, which is b, so you have b to the m divided by b to the n, you subtract in the exponents. So similarly to the product rule, if you have division on the inside, on the input, that becomes subtraction as we separate the log. So we can expand this logarithm out to log base b of u minus log base b of v. We call this one the quotient rule. And we've seen this one before already. If we have b to the m to the n power, so a power to a power, we multiply the powers. So this becomes b to the m times n, which in turn, we can translate to logarithms as if we have on the input an exponent u to the r, r is the exponent, we can bring this r out front. And this is how we would write it as r times log base b of u. So this is what we call the power rule, where you can pull that power down in front. And then some other rules of logs that we will see and we'll talk more about. Uh, the first one is that if we have b to the log base b of u, so in the exponent here, this is log base b of u, this result is just the input u. So if you have an exponent, and that exponent is a logarithmic expression, in particular, if the bases of the exponential and the bases of the logarithm match, then the result is just the input of the logarithm. And then also, if we have log base b of, and that input is b with an exponent of, say, a, the result here is just the exponent a. Or in other words, another way of saying this one is that log base b of b is equal to 1. It just so happens that we can pull that a out front using the power rule. And always remember that roots can be written as exponents, where n is the root and you're dividing by n. So the root is like the dividing in the exponent. The m is the numerator of the root. So if you have square root of b, since there's not a root written, it's a square root, so that root would be 2. Or if you have the fifth root of b, that denominator would be 5. So let's get some practice with expanding. So rewriting expressions using the sum or difference or power rules or any other rules that we have. So we want to expand each of these logarithms. And when we expand, it's always helpful to think about or describe the different rules that are being used. So for this first one here, we have log of 8x. And so if the parentheses is not written here, always assume whatever follows the logarithm, that's the input. That's what goes in the parentheses. So here we have multiplication on the inside. And think of this as the 8 being the u and the x being the v. We can use the product rule. So using the product rule, we can rewrite this as this is equal to log. A base is not written, so we're assuming the base is 10, but we don't need to write the base if the base is 10. So this is log of 8 plus log of x. So we're using the product rule here, which says if you have multiplication on the input, you can separate that to two logs and it's addition between the two logs. So this is all we have to do here to apply that product rule and rewrite or expand this logarithm. No other way to rewrite this. On the next one here, we have log base a of the third root or cube root of m squared. So it helps to rewrite this using exponents. So we have this is equal to, I'm going to shift over to the left so we have space, log base a of m to the two thirds power. Remember, this is going back to the exponent rule. Scrolling back up, we can see if we have the nth root of b to the m, that n goes into the denominator of the exponent and the m is in the numerator of the exponent. So think of the two as the m and the three as the n. So this step, or what we're using here is just rules of exponents. And then the next step is we now have log base a of m to some power. So if we have the exponent 
in the input, we can bring that exponent out in front. So this exponent of two thirds can come out front here. So the result that we have is two thirds out front times the log base A of M. And that's all we have to do for this one. We just used rules of exponents and then we also used the power rule. And then on the next one here, there's a bit more stuff happening. So let's see how we can simplify this one. So let's first try to simplify everything using the exponent. And with a lot of these, there's a couple different ways that you can go about or approach them. One way may or may not be better than the other. There's there's no way of telling. So just follow your nose and try to simplify everything as much as you can. So we want to simplify everything in terms of the exponents before we deal with the logarithm. So we have here, this is equal to the five is a root of this radical. So we can rewrite that as an exponent. So we have the natural log of this big fraction is all raised to the one fifth power. So we have x squared y cubed over z. And this is all raised to the one fifth power. So this is the big input of the natural log and we have everything raised to the one fifth power. Now what we could do is we could apply the one fifth to each part, the x squared, the y cubed, and then the z to the one, we can apply the one fifth to each part. Or what we can also do it is we can just use the power rule right now. We can just use the power rule, bring it out front and not have to worry about the one fifth anymore. So we have one fifth out front times the natural log of x squared y cubed over z. So this couple steps we did here is exponent rules. And then also we used the power rule. And then next we can use the quotient rule because we have division here. So we have one fifth out front times ln of x squared y cubed minus ln of z. And I'm putting it all in parentheses because it's one fifth is multiplying everything. It's one thing to remember that the one fifth is multiplying all this stuff. So this step that we did here was the quotient rule. And then on the inside, we can apply the product rule because we have the natural log of two things multiplied with each other. And we can't use the power rule right now because the exponents that are on the inside of this logarithm, the x squared and the y cubed, the, those are different exponents. So we can only use the power rule if the power or the exponent is applied to all the parts of the input. So we can't apply the power rule yet, but we can apply the product rule. So we still have that one fifth out front times the natural log of x squared. Product rule tells us that we can separate the inputs to each have their own natural log, but we add the natural logs. So we have natural log of x squared plus the natural log of y cubed minus the natural log of z. And this is all multiplied by the one fifth. So the step that we did here is the product rule. And then lastly, we're going to distribute the one fifth in, but we're also going to use the power rule to bring the exponents down because now we have all just one term on the inside of each of these logarithms. So we have natural log of x squared, that two can come out front, but we're multiplying the two with the one fifth. So this is two fifths natural log of x, and then bring the three out front of the natural log of y, and that's being multiplied by one fifth again. So this is plus three fifths natural log of y. And then there's no exponent to move out front. Well, technically there's a one, but pulling the one out front doesn't do anything to the z. And so we just have minus one fifth times the natural log of z. And so this step right here was using uh, the power rule. So this is probably the most involved of a expansion that you could be asked to do. We got pretty much all the rules in play here. We have exponent rules with powers to powers. We have exponent rules with roots. We have the power rule. We have the quotient rule, the product rule. We have all those rules 
all mushed together into one. So at the end of the day, we're just expanding everything out. The goal is to get all exponents out of the inside and to separate any multiplication or division that we have on the inputs. So now what we did, you, I like to think of it as we just had something that was nice and tidy and then we made a big mess out of it. Now we're given some messes and we want to make it nice and tidy. We want to clean up the messes. So instead of expanding, we're now going to condense. So we have these expressions log of x minus log of y plus log of z. So remember the x, y, and z, those are all inputs of each of these individual logs. So we want to work backwards from our rules. So if we have a log of x minus a log of y, there's technically the same base here, it's a base of 10. So because they're the same base and there's subtraction between these two logs, that means that we can use the quotient rule backwards. So remember what the quotient rule says, scrolling back up, the quotient rule says that log base b of u divided by v is equal to, we just subtract the logs, log base b of u minus log base b of v. But now we're working backwards. It's like we have the right hand side, we have the subtraction of the two logs, so we can condense it down going to the left of log base b of u divided by v. So if you have subtraction of the logs, you just combine them to one log and divide the inputs. So this is equal to log of x divided by y. And then we have the plus log of z on the outside still here. So this step that we used here is the quotient rule. And then now we have addition between these two logs, which means this is going backwards with the product rule. So we can multiply the inputs. So multiply x over y with z. And we have log of x times z because z is a whole number. So you multiply it in the numerator because it's like z over one. And this is over y and this is all condensed down. And the step that we used here, or the rule that we used is the product rule. And then on the next one, we have one half in front, log base three of x minus three out front times log base three of x minus one. So we have these coefficients out front of the logs, which means we can use the power rule backwards. So this is equal to bring the one half to the exponent of the x. So this is log base three of x to the one half minus, now we can bring that three to the exponent of the input. So this is log base three of, I'm gonna write brackets to show that this is all inside the input x minus one to the third power. And since this is subtraction here, we can use the quotient rule like we did on the previous one, but just going backwards with the quotient rule. So this is equal to log base three of, so the subtraction is on the second log here. So that's the denominator of the input. So the input is x minus three cubed. So that's going to be the denominator of the fraction on the big input. So we have x to the one half, which is the square root of x, all over x minus one to the third power. And that's all combined there. So on this last one here, we have coefficients out front again, so we can bring those coefficients to the exponents because that's using the power rule backwards. So this is the natural log of z minus one squared plus the natural log of three z plus two to the third power. And this is addition between the two logs. The logs are the same base, base of E, because it's a natural log. So we multiply the inputs, we can condense this. So this is natural log of Z minus one squared times three Z plus two cubed. And so we'll now talk about how to evaluate logarithms in your calculator. Some of the logarithms are nice if it's a base of 10 or if it's a base of E, so the natural log. Unfortunately, that's not always the base that we're going to be given, but we can always convert using what's called the change of base formula. So we can always convert to the common base of base of 10 or to the natural log, which is the base of E. So if we're trying to evaluate or solve log base b of x, we can write this as log of x 
divided by log of b, the base. So that base is 10. We're writing it this way so we can put it in our calculator. And we can also do it as the natural log. So we can do the natural log of x over the natural log of the base b. So the x and the base, so the input and the base become inputs of the common log or the natural log, either one, you're going to get the same result. And so we can evaluate logarithms in our calculator. So if we have log base four of 17, we can rewrite this as log of 17 divided by log of four. And you put that in your calculator and you get approximately 2.04. Or we could use the natural log. If we have log base 3 of 29, we could write this as natural log of 29 over natural log of 3. And this is approximately, if we want to see it in the calculator. So in the calculator, we're in the function menu, F-U-N-C. So we have the natural log and the log are right here on the right-hand side, just above the E. And so if we're doing the natural log of 29, close the parenthesis, divided by the natural log of 3. Close the parenthesis, hit enter, and we get about 3.07. And then again, we can rewrite this as natural log of 81 over natural log of 3 which we get in our calculators is actually four. So another way of finding this one is we could rewrite this log as log base three of 81, but we could rewrite 81 as log base three of three to the fourth power. We can write a common base here and going back to the exponent and logarithm rules that we we're talking about, if we have log base B, of b to the a, then that result is just the exponent a. So it's the same idea here. If that input of the logarithm can be rewritten as the base to some exponent, so in this case we can rewrite 81 as 3 to the 4, then that means that the result here is 4. And so working with graphing logarithms, this basic parent function of the logarithm we have here that we talked about before, to actually graph this, you would write this as log of x over log of 2. And then this one here would be log of x minus 2 over log of 2. But just looking at the original as transformations, this minus 2 on the inside means we're shifting to the right by 2. So it would look something like this. And then here, when you have log base 2 of x, you can rewrite this as log of x over log of 2. And then you just add 2 on the outside. So this is a shift up by 2. So it would look something like this.